This one is a contemporary fairy tale. That is, she turned heads. She arrived unheralded some months back, yet immediately turned heads as she was stylishly dressed with a tinge of swagger. Word spread she had moved into a suite of rooms in a downtown hotel. She went by her middle name, Edna. All her black cat was called Wistful, with no explanation offered for either. And Miss Wistful could be seen posing at all hours on the Baroque railing of their balcony overlooking the park. Edna often brought her fruit to the park, sat on that bench near the fountain, playing dreamy versions of tulls, mythical songs from the wood, beguiling children to abandon the park's playground and come gather around her and gradually slink into an impish dance. The children learn where she lived, sometimes brought sometimes brought wildflower bouquets left them at the front desk of her hotel, accompanied by poems they'd written about discoveries made at the seashore, much like those Mary Oliver poems that Edna had read to them on other afternoons in the park. Sundays, she's at the neighborhood church, recognized for its outstanding choir. Singing along in the background with other members of the congregation, now and then getting carried away, unable to restrain her, a surgeon soprano. And the volunteered for the local garden club, planting flowers in public spaces, introduced them to the Impressionist style Gertrude Chico had pioneered in England resulting in waves of color, diverse coloration, blending one shade into another. Soon, public spirit was aroused, and membership in the garden club tripled, including youths in Monet t-shirts, taking care of their own playground, and seniors with their watering cans, serving drinks to all the planters and urns. Our Edna did love the nightlife, though, with a fondness for clubs with live music, where she danced till closing time. The most debonair gents on some nights, the most eccentric on others. Arriving home on a random morning after a leisurely breakfast, who knows where. Now the politicians from both parties wooed her with hints of favors to come and the trappings of prestige if she would lend her support to their worthy causes. But she politely but firmly declined every time. Sad to say, when the townspeople joined with the politicians in their pleas, the bell tolled. Edna for sure possessed powers of enchantment, content with its benevolent ministration, and was chagrined at such misconstruing of who she was and why she was here. Lingering in her rooms in the old hotel for an unusual length of time, so when inquiries were made as to her well-being, it became known that Edna had the part of our town. Last seen moving breezily through the park and its memories with wistful in her gilded carrier. All right, Johnny.